Okay, so welcome to Leak TV. We've got Jay London on, a multi-talented broadcaster who's presenting for Heart and Capital Extra, and he's also the co-founder of Threads TV, a lifestyle and men's fashion publication. You right, Jay? How's it going? Yeah, not too bad, man. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, if you could tell me a small, small overview of your uh, music collection. My music collection. Yeah. Oh, pff, it ranges from a from a from a collection of I don't know from like hip hop to R and B to to like maybe jazz or alternative music, drum and bass, um, house, I'm a big house fan as well. Mm. So it kind of just depends on the music, obviously like um, a lot of reggae and that sort of stuff as well, dancehall music. So it's, it kind of just depends on the mood. So there's a big collection there, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> has it matured as you've, as you've grown? I don't know if it's matured. I think um, growing up I used to listen to actually a lot of pop. Um, that's kind of where my first kind of musical taste started to begin. So early stages, um, it was it was a matter of I don't even know if I should be admitting this, but it was like the now forties oh, right. CDs. So like the now all like hits, um, fresh hits and all of that stuff. Mm. So like I don't know things were on there like the Backstreet Boys and Bewitched and all of this <laughs> kind of stuff. And then classics, not much, not very cool, huh? Um, and then from there it kind of developed into then I sort of found some hip hop. Um, one of my friends was really into hip hop and then he introduced me to it and this was at a very young age and then started listening to that and I liked that it was just different um, mm. from like the pop stuff that I was listening to. So already there was a, a completely different kind of cross genre there. Um, and then Eminem was kind of the first person that I started listening to, oh, right, okay. um, Marshall Mathers um, EP and all of that stuff. So I started listening to that and then that was very violent, very aggressive. And yeah. I liked the sounds but... I don't know, I wasn't really into the lyrics and stuff yet. I just kind of liked the fact that it was it was more me than like Bewitched was, yeah, for yeah. example. Um and then I found Nas, um, who has remained my favourite rapper since ever then. Since. Ever since then. So it kind of steadily grew from there and then as time went on I started finding other other music and Chase and State has kind of introduced me to the whole dance um drum and bass scene. And then from there I was kind of like a big fan of them. So, yeah, I think every year I kind of find something a little bit different. Um, but I'm I'm very open to, to the genres or to, to whatever it may be. And obviously grime as well, coming from East London, that played a big influence when I was growing up. Um, listening to like old radio stations like Deja Vu, then you had people like Dizzy Rascal, you know, Wiley, all of these guys kind mm. of coming up in the scene, which are doing their thing now. But there was loads of influences there, which is why I kind of feel my taste varies from genre to genre now touching on the uh, the grime bit what mm. do you think of the american that like kanye west having to push grime whereas it's not exactly well this is a, popular in the uk at the moment this is a big conversation that everyone's having isn't it mm, um yeah and i i do have a lot to say on it but i think if i go too much into it then we'll literally be here forever you won't get any more <laughs> done um what i will say is um i think that i think it's a positive and a negative I think when the Brits thing happened with Kanye um, and he brought all the Boy Better Know guys on stage and he yeah, had yeah, everyone, yeah. all the UK artists in the back, I, I didn't see it as kind of like a, a rejection thing or kind of a thing where it was like parring them off. I thought it was a thing where it was embraced. I know it's a UK platform um, and we've got an American artist there, but fact is it's the Brit Awards and it's a massive kind of awards show which they're going to get the biggest artist. So if it was the Mobile Awards... You wouldn't even see people like Kanye West turn up. There. No, no, no. So the fact that it was the Brits and they brought like the big artists, you've got like people like Kanye West there, and he's decided, well, do you know what? It, it's only right that we've got some UK people on the scene. Um, I think that 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 can only be a positive. You see, it's more of a respect thing. It's more of a respect thing. I think I don't think it's a thing where he thought oh, I'm going to put him in the background. He didn't. Ha Kanye West didn't have to have anybody on the stage. Period. True. He's yeah. Kanye West. So whether he had people there or not. It was still going to be a great performance. People were still going to watch it. People were still going to talk about it the next day. So the fact that he's there and he's shouting at Skepta at the end can only be a positive. But then you have got a lot of people, and there is the flip side that like, uh, why are they seen in the background? American yeah, yeah, artists yeah. in the foreground. Why are we praising the fact that Kanye is like respecting us? I don't know if it's a thing like of us saying, yeah, we're getting the respect from the Americans. But it's just it's more publicity at the end of the day because Americans will watch that performance now. And maybe hear the shout out from Kanye West um, for Skepta, Take and then an go interest. and have a look at Skepta. So yeah, yeah. it's just more publicity at the end of the day. Touching on uh, Kanye, what do you think of him delving into the fashion industry? 
I think Kanye is a crazy guy. I'm a, I'm a big Kanye fan. Um, he does have his moments. He's very egotistical, and that is kind of one of the reasons why I like him. I think he, yeah. you, you love him or you hate him, right? He's, he's one of those guys. So for me, I think he, he clearly does have a strong passion for fashion because whenever you listen to his interviews and whenever you listen to the things that he wants to get into, that is always there. I think he's just a little bit a bit mixed up in the head himself. So he's having his own battles, personal battles. But I quite like the collection. I thought it was mm-hmm. cool. A lot. He's got a lot of criticism for it. But yeah, he's being too expensive when yeah. he's always preaching that we should all... Yeah, yeah, same, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but it's 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 a business at the end of the day, isn't it? So he's yeah, not yeah. he's not going to bring out something that people will buy it. So I don't know if you was releasing a pair of trainers and and you knew that people would pay three four hundred quid for it, yeah. you wouldn't release them for fifty quid, would you? No, you true, very true. Because <laughs> you know that people are going to buy it for mm. three hundred four hundred quid. So yeah, to answer your question, I think I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, I think people will label his brand as kind of like B and R. It's just it's one of those things, but. He's he's a person who's clearly researched into fashion, so yeah, yeah. that's something that I can respect, especially coming from that kind of background. Um, he's done the research, do you know what I mean? It's not just a case of him saying, "Yeah, I'm an artist. I'm going to release some T-shirts with a slogan on it." He's actually True, yeah. he's been to fashion shows. He knows he's spoken to the guys, um, and he's he's put the work in. Whether that's him himself personally or he's got people doing that for him, he knows his stuff. So yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't know if you'll see me wearing the stuff, but. Yeah, good on him. <laughs> no worries. Um, has a musician ever influenced your fashion or your style choices? Um, I think influences kind of come from everywhere. Uh, it could be from a musician. It could be from someone just walking along the street. It could be from an actor or, or, or just an average Joe. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't think consciously I've been influenced by a musician. I feel subconsciously I might. Um, just by taking things in and kind of seeing something and then like, oh yeah, that like that's nice, that works well. And then when I'm actually putting something together, that might be in the back of my head. Um, and then visually, I'm kind of just piecing something together yeah. without realising that I've taken the influence from, from that person. So there's a lot of influences in the music scene, obviously. Um, going back to Kanye, yeah, he's a guy who I think is pretty cool when he dresses. A lot of people will probably scrutinise him for that. Mm. Um, but again... Like a lot of the stuff, a lot of the posts and that you see on Instagram or, or in in the news, I think he looks pretty cool. Um, obviously there's the whole ASAP Rocky thing, yeah, um, yeah. the whole trap scene, yeah. Which I don't know. I think it's a little bit over the top. Like you've got a lot of guys wearing leggings now, and I don't know if that's it. No, no, no. Um, leggings and shorts and and all of that stuff, and it's crazy how much influence music does have on people. Um. For instance, I don't know, Beyonce could just wear something tomorrow and then everyone will be wearing it next week because Beyonce wore it. Whether they admit it or not, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's something that they're doing. So it is crazy. But yeah, to answer your question, me personally, I don't think I've ever looked at an artist and said, oh yeah, they're cool. I like how they dress. I'm going to do that myself. Would you say hip hop, would you say, well, it might be, I think hip hop's more closely linked to fashion than any other genre of music. Would, mm. you, would you agree? Um... I think there's there's the whole kind of like flossy appearance thing in hip hop. I think people care more about like I need to look a certain way or I need to I need to appear to be cool. Um, and obviously, a lot of hip hop obviously comes from America. So with that genre, you've got you've got that kind of that confidence, and you know how Americans are really mm. confident and they're really like outlandish, and so you would you do get that. Um, but I don't know. For me, the American scene. Obviously, the fashion scene within hip hop is changing a lot. Before, it was all about like baggy clothes and like hats back to front and things like. Well, Americans in general just like their stuff that don't fit them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whereas now, um, they are kind of getting more into the skinny jeans and stuff. People like Kendrick and ASAP, <clears throat> like we were saying just a minute ago, that that have come out and are wearing these things. But then they've probably been through their own battles and been scrutinised because, yeah, I true. don't know, in the beginning they weren't really seen as like a hip-hop person because of the way that they were dressing. But obviously now you would respect Kendrick. No one's going to say, you know, Kendrick yeah. isn't hip-hop now. So, yeah. Um, kind of modern-day Nas. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I do feel like um, like there is there is a big association with hip-hop and fashion. But I think all kind of musicians do like to, to have an appearance because it's important. Um as a presenter, True. I've spoken to a lot of people and what I've found is a lot of people that are serious about music 
don't really care about the apparent side of things. So yeah, a lot of guys, busy. yeah, a lot of guys that I've spoken to in the UK have said, well, I like to look and feel cool, but for me, it doesn't, I don't really, I'm not really that interested as long as the music's good and as long as people are listening to what I'm, what I'm singing, rapping or whatever talking about, mm. then that's what's more important to me. Exactly true. Yeah. Um, what clothing mistakes really wind you up? Oh, where do I start? Um, the leggings thing. I'm not a big fan of that. I just don't like... I don't mind when people kind of don't make an effort. So if you don't make an effort and you're not into fashion, then that's cool. Just like chuck in your favourite t-shirt, your jeans, and go about your business. But then it's... What grinds my gears is when people try and then completely fail. So, <laughs> you know, like... And then, they, and then they feel like they're really cool. So, like, for instance, wearing sunglasses indoors or, like, you're on a train and you see, like, on the underground and you've got, like, this guy wearing a sunglasses and he's wearing, like, a suit that clearly doesn't fit him and then he's got, like, these jeans on that are just, like, purple and, <laughs> like, these red shoes and then he's trying to coordinate his shoes with his hat. But then he thinks he's really cool. It just doesn't look right. It just doesn't look right, does it? I saw a guy with purple trousers on once and uh, running shoes. Oh, and yeah, like see, a, this is what I mean. Like a proper top on as well. So yeah. Like, oh. But then it's it's okay if you're not into fashion. Then no one's. I'm not going to look at someone and judge you and be like, why are you wearing that? But <laughs> it's just the fact that if you if you have actually tried or you do think that you look cool, then you kind of just need to look at yourself in the mirror and just decide, you know, is this working? But then to play devil's advocate on the flip side, as long as you feel comfortable, who's to tell you any different? I exactly. Mean, who's to tell you, you know, that doesn't look cool? Um, but no man should ever wear Uggs. That, that's, that's something that shouldn't happen. <laughs> no, no I'm, I wouldn't be seen dead in there. <laughs> um, has a track ever influenced you in your life, like your life decisions or how you carry yourself um, or a body of art? There are a lot of tracks, like music does, does touch me sometimes, especially like if I'm driving and I've got a track really loud. Um, and you just and you listen to the lyrics and I don't know if it's something like say for instance if you're on your own journey and you kind of feel like you're making progressive steps and then you hear a track come on and you're listening to it and they're talking about like coming from somewhere and then getting somewhere like like um obviously everyone's familiar with the new Drake album yeah, um, yeah. Legend is a track for me that I will listen to I'll turn up and it actually makes me feel like do you know what I mean this is something that's really inspiring he's like oh my god I'm a legend and you can actually feel like the mm. words and you can feel the passion in it. Um, and I love that. I love being able to listen to a song and hearing the artists in the booth, hearing them in the recording studio and hearing that passion in their voice. Yeah, you know, it's real. Yeah, like that, that really gets me. So when I, when I hear things like that, that grit, that kind of, it, it does get to me. So I don't know if I can think of any tracks off the top of my head that make me feel oh yeah I need to listen to that track to be motivated or inspired but there are certain things or certain tracks or or things that you listen to that will kind of put you in the zone make you make a funny face like you're sucking a lemon mm. and and just kind of be involved in the music um I find a lot of tra Chase and Status tracks do that as well a lot of drum and bass and um dubstep in particular as well like going to a festival and just listening to like people like Nero for instance yeah they just completely kill it um so there are things that kind of just take you out from everyone else in the zone when you're listening to something, even if you've just got your headphones on and you listen, you don't care who's around or, or who can see you, but if you're connecting with that person, with that artist, and they're saying something that you can relate to, then it's always going to be mm. motivational. Going back to Drake with that, man, the motivational bit. Mm. Uh, like his latest track, his latest album, sorry, a lot of motivational or interesting lyrics in it where he goes, says, scream my weaknesses and whisper my accomplishments mm. that's, that's that's kind of true in a way that like mm. no one wants to know if you're doing well everyone just wants to know if you're doing yeah better. yeah but that's that's just that's just life as it goes you've got a lot of people that um are trying to do the same thing that other people are so they are i don't know they can get a little bit i don't know like jealous or just they just don't like the fact that people are doing well you do have people like that which is a shame um or you get people that try and play people down because it makes them feel better about themselves. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, don't worry about that. That's, that's all right. I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. But I don't know. I think it is one of those things where in the industry, it is, it is always easy to say what people aren't doing rather than what people are doing. Yeah. Because it is very competitive and a lot of people are doing things, let's be honest. Um, especially here in the UK, we've got a lot of creative people and 
the UK is definitely on an up right now, whether that's in, I don't know, a media industry like we're in or like a music industry, we, we're doing big things. So it is very competitive and it is, it is very creative and it should actually just motivate people and make you feel a little bit more determined to, to get off your bum mm. and, and do something productive um, rather than screaming someone's weaknesses. Um, I don't like to criticise people at all because they may be doing something that, that I can I can take inspiration from. So even if you look at someone and they're doing something bad, I mean, at least they've done it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So try and do something, make a mistake and then improve on it rather than just saying, oh, you know, that looks rubbish. <laughs> true, very true. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks for coming on, mate. No worries, no, no worries. worries. Thanks. thanks for having me, man. No worries, it's been a pleasure, man. Cool.